Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the FamVestor Podcast. I am your host, Sunny Burns. And I'm your co-host, Sun Marie Burns. So today we have a very special couple on the show. Uh, they've traveled the world, and, you know, for 53 weeks they just spent in 2017 through 18, they spent traveling the world, went to Asia, went to Europe, all over the place, South Africa, um, and they didn't do it alone. They have three kids, so they traveled their four-year-old, six-year-old, and seven-year-old. So kind of a crazy journey there. And what's even crazier is that they're homeless, and they were jobless while traveling. And, you know, they, they sold their house in the midst of their travels, um, where they were renting it out, and then all of a sudden their, their market locally in California popped up, and uh, they decided to sell it. And so they returned home homeless, and they've been on the pretty much they haven't bought a home since uh for the last tw uh, 12 months that they've been uh back at back in the states and they've just been homestaying so it's a huge journey of homestaying they homestayed throughout their 53 week journey through europe and asia and now have continued that um while being in the states right so they're living truly a nomadic sojourners lifestyle which is pretty, pretty incredible, pretty brave to In do. Incredible as it is, but with a family of yes. five, just, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's a tremendous it's a, journey that we're yeah. excited to unpack for you all. And a very adventurous couple, you know, they just uh, finished a 43 mile uh, canoe trip with their kids too, down the Missouri River. Right. Following the Lewis and Clark, part of the Lewis and Clark mm -hmm. Trail, they said. Yeah. It's an amazing story. I think you'll be inspired by it. It is definitely living the life that, that they love and uh, living it very uniquely and epically in their own way. Yeah. So without further ado, let's... Oh, there is one thing. I uh, just wanted to, again, announce that we do have a voicemail line. So if you want to ask a question or just leave us some feedback about the show, of course, leave us an iTunes rating and review. Always appreciated. But we do have our phone number, which you can call and leave us as voicemail. And we'll, we can play it back on the show and answer that question or comment or just that feedback. And that number is 862-200-7484. So without further ado, let's get to the show. You're listening to the FamVestor Podcast. If you're looking to raise your family with intention, gain financial independence, and live a life of true freedom, you're in the right place. Join us as we explore together how to create thriving families, because strong families are the cornerstone for a world at peace. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the FamVestor Podcast. Today, we're joined by Jessica and William Swenson. When I heard their story, I was just really inspired, and I really wanted to get them on the show, so I'm so glad they're here with us today. They're a family of five. They just got back from traveling the world, and they haven't really stopped traveling. They're on uh, Right now, they're based out of Phoenix, but they're just continuing their travels, living this nomadic lifestyle, and I'm excited to dive deep with them to, you know, dispel some of the myths of traveling with kids and just hear, uh, dig into their story and find out, you know, how they got started and how they have uh, built up the courage to do something as monumental as traveling the world with a family of five. So let's welcome to the show, Jessica and William Swinson. Hi. Howdy. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We're so uh, excited to dig into your story. It's really very unique, very brave and bold, and just totally original. So this is something that is going to be a lot of fun to, to dig into. Yeah, most of my friends I know, you know, who have one kid are like so afraid to even travel anywhere. Right. And you guys have now <laughs> gone ahead and traveled all over the world. So definitely something really cool I want to dig into. Right. Um. So I was thinking to just start us out, let us start from the very, very beginning. Um, tell us a little bit about your backstory, your family, where you grew up, and how you met. You can go first. Okay. Um, I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area in a small little town called Pleasanton. It was very pleasant. <laughs> um, and then went down to LA for undergrad and kind of moved around a little bit, went to Colorado after LA. Detox. For nature. <laughs> Got some fresh <laughs> air. Yes. And then ended up back in Orange County for a teaching credential. Um, and then that's where I met William. We actually met online. Before it was cool. Before it was cool. <laughs> so we, ha we tried to come up with like better stories, but we just always told people we met online. <laughs> I think you're the third guest we've had on right. this show so who many. met there. Their spouse online. It's really, it's a trending thing. How long have you guys been married? 
Uh, 11 and a half years. It'll be 12 in December. Yeah. Okay. Nice. And you guys have three kids, right? How old are they? We have an almost 10-year-old. Yeah, 6, 8, and almost 10. Yeah. Six, eight, eight and ten. almost ten. Wow, awesome. Great. How about, so how about you, William? Where did you grow up? Well, what she didn't say is that in her childhood, she got to take vacation. Um, meanwhile, I, on the other hand, I'm the youngest of seven. Uh, wow. We uh, didn't take vacation. Mm -hmm. um, my first legitimate vacation was our honeymoon. Yeah. True, wow. honest to goodness vacation where nothing's really required. It's not like a mission trip where you're out, you know, doing specific tasks mm -hmm. or uh, it's not for, for travel, for a business-related thing. It's my, That was my first legitimate uh, vacation. So I'm the youngest of seven. Uh, we grew up in Orange County. Um, my sister still lives in the same house that we grew up in. Nice. And, um, and that's kind of it. Yeah, we, when we met online, um, she was uh, across town, and we had to kind of commute just to see each other. Um, <laughs> but uh, when we got married she didn't disclose to me that she had this bug and it was some sometime around after six months after we got married, she looks at me and says, all right, where are we going next? <laughs> Where'd you guys go to honeymoon? We took a cruise down to, uh, Mexico. Down to Mexico. We, so he proposed in September and we got married in December. And so wow. we just found like the cheapest, easiest fit in. Cause it was my first year of teaching too. So we really didn't have a lot of vacation to work with. Yeah, and true story, um, because we picked something quick that worked, that was convenient, yeah. we ended up honeymooning with your aunt and cousins, yeah. who happened to be on the same exact cruise that we were on. <laughs> you had no idea? <laughs> no. We didn't know until after the fact. They had before. They're like, oh, you're getting married like this that week. Uh, well, when? Because <laughs> we're leaving on a cruise. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> Yeah. So, wow. William, what were you doing at this time? You know, Jessica's a teacher. What were you up to? I was uh, I was doing cubicle accounting. Cubicle so I was accounting. in a corporate world uh, living in a cube. And, okay. um, yeah, it was, uh, yeah. It was, as it was, much as excitement as you thought a cubicle <laughs> accounting would be. Sounds yes. thrilling. I, I can relate. Yeah. I Yes, I understand that feeling. Both sides. Yes, teaching and cubicle. Uh, I was actually on collections side, so making calls. I did that for a time too. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I can say about that. <laughs> Not my favorite thing in the world. Yes. <laughs> as soon as we started having kids, then I started my own photography business because it was way uh, more lenient flexibility wise, and I could make a lot outlet. more for a sh you know shorter period of time away from family. So. And she needed right. a creative outlet yeah. that was not just in the four walls of the house. Mm. Right, right. That's so what important. subject were you teaching? I'm curious. Oh, when I taught, I taught fifth grade. Um, okay. Yeah, so, and then photography wise, my bread and butter was posed uh, newborn in the studio. Oh, nice. And then I did birth um, and maternity and through the first year essentially. But the Bay Area is, there's a lot of birth clients who also, so I enjoyed that as well, kind of documentary style. Wow, so how many years uh, were you teaching and working in accounting together uh, before you had kids? And when did you make that switch in career to a more flexible lifestyle with photography? So we, I did it for two years and then it was when the economy slumped and I got a pink slip because I oh, had yeah. just started. Which, so, which coincided with you being pregnant. So it worked out. Yeah, well. it worked out well because we that knew that out. I wanted to stay home. So mm -hmm. yeah, so I taught for two years and then I picked up a photography about six years ago. So it was the, when my third was within a year, I think, and he's always done corporate accounting until we left. So he was working for a startup for five years and they started having rumblings of moving locations. Mm. And so people were leaving and getting upset. And they, they swore up one like, side and down the other yeah. that they weren't going to close down the main headquarters by us. And eventually it happened. And, and you know, yeah. no great surprise. But um, there was this was all right in the middle of, of our realization of uh, uh you know, a lot of death in the family, a lot of uh, yeah. a lot of close friends, um, and your favorite teacher retired on a Friday and had a heart attack and died the next day. Oh, wow. and so we said, if we ever make it to retirement, Lord willing, are we going to uh, be alive? <laughs> are we going to be alive? <laughs> are we going to be well enough uh, physically? Um, you know, my mom was in the, in the midst of dying of cancer. Mm. Um, or your dad has had cancer, um, and yeah. it's 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 a sad reality of the world that we're in there was already enough stuff that didn't you know allow for tomorrow to be promised but mm. now we have other things to worry about mm -hmm. it was kind of a perfect storm like all the things that we it's just very comfortable living you know there were things that we wish we had 
you know, some more freedom, but it was okay. And then, yeah, 2017 hit and it was like <laughs> everything hit the fan. Every, mm. Everything that we had kind of built was kind of being torn down. And so I was like, hey, I have this idea instead of, <laughs> you know, we've been saving to go to yeah. Europe for six weeks. Let's just take a trip around the world. I heard this podcast. So, Somebody so who did it. Even the plans wow. that we had to save up my accrued time off and bring my laptop with me and log in at month end and do my duties there, but take the rest of the time off. Those plans in the midst of everything else happening were completely shot out because the company had changed their their, their policy. policy from paid time off that you can accrue. And you know, if you quit or are fired, it's paid, it's owed to you. Right. Um, they to change it to responsible time, time off, off, which is apparently pretty popular with tech these days. The theory going is you can take off as much time as you possibly can. So long as your work is done. Mm-hmm. Which is great for people who work projects. projects. If you want to, you know, bang bang out a a, a a twenty week project in seventeen weeks and take three weeks off because you can, you can do that. But in finance and accounting, there's something happening every day. It never and ends. Yeah. You often don't legitimately take vacation. You just front load as much work as you can, and then you work overtime at the back end to mm. do everything that you didn't do when you weren't there. Mm. So it was one of those. Yeah, so we weren't even going to be able to do what we had uh, talked about and planned and some of my colleagues had done. Um, yeah, it was uh, disheartening. Oh, least. that's a bummer. Yeah. yeah. That but was... she came up with this idea, and she said, how about we go around the world? And I said, you're crazy. We haven't even <laughs> left two or three we can never even take our children out of the country. No. Really? Okay. And, and yeah. I'm like, no, but maybe if we do a test run, we'll see. I mean, we've we had seen quite a bit of states. We've done a lot of road tripping because California, you drive eight hours and you're still in California. So we had done a lot just to kind of whet our appetite. Like well, our to- kids can travel. Like this is okay. Um, but I do like to say like we were poster children, like if we could do this and had literally never taken our kids out of the, out of the country, like any, anyone could do this. <laughs> yeah. I, I was a nice. boy scout, a, lot, a fair amount of camping, a fair amount of backpacking. Jessica had done quite a bit of vacationing throughout and her traveling. life and, and travel in different States. And you've seen a few different countries. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been to, to Africa, I've been down to Mexico early in our marriage. We, we did, uh, well, when, when our firstborn was born, we did north of Washington and just went into British Columbia. Um, nothing major, but we had done a lot of driving road trips mm-hmm. um, to, to satiate my wife's uh, travel bug. <laughs> and uh, and so we, we had done 12 or 13 states just driving. Um, we knew we could do a certain amount of travel, but it wasn't like we had done international. We had only flown a couple times when our kids were very small because you could put them on your lap. Yes. Um, yeah, this was kind of and big... and William. I mean, once you're married and you start traveling a little more, did you catch this bug, or is it more just like, okay, honey, I'll do it for you? What what was the kind of? We're vastly there? different. Um, <laughs> she's more Type A than I could ever dream to be. Drive <laughs> forward, do the things, and I'm like, I'm the youngest of seven. Everything just kind of happened, and if you didn't go along, uh, you were miserable. So I I I, I took uh, I took the words of Saint Paul very to heart, you know, whatever situation I'm in, whether I'm hungry, whether I'm poor, whether I'm, um, you know, whatever situation I find myself in, I'm content. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, it wasn't like I didn't want to travel. Of course, who doesn't want to see the world? Right. uh, Except for very strange people. Um, (laughs) And and I, and we we actually, we we both really enjoy it. I think she's got uh, uh, a bigger bug than I have, but uh, no, we love it. And we wouldn't, we wouldn't have, uh, changed our lifestyle and changed our state, the state that we both grew up in, you know, still call home uh, right. for that matter. We wouldn't be here if we weren't intending to continue traveling and doing what we can do to show our kids more than just what you can read on a page and watch on YouTube of the world, of yeah. culture, of people, of humanity, uh, of creation. And so that's, you know, that, that's what we're, we have purposed ourselves to do. And we enjoy it. We actually really want to get out and do more of it. It's fantastic. So here we are. You you are you met, you're married, you're living a pretty standard lifestyle, you know, both of you working various professions, you know, sticking around where you grew up, same area. Uh, you have three kids. Then you hit a really rough year, both uh, in terms of your career and more importantly, in terms of family relationships and loss and and some pretty um, 
life-shaking events that drive you to, to make this incredible shift of wanting to travel the world. So tell us how you came to conjure up this plan because to just say I'm going to travel the world is one thing to actually right. make it happen is a whole nother thing especially with a four six and seven year old yes I'm really yeah. curious to know how did you set yourself up for success to get going on this this journey yeah um yeah it's me um so we homeschooled from the beginning it was an important aspect of another important aspect of our family culture um so I you know we were able to always kind of travel in off seasons and kind of that kind of thing. Um, I made a giant, no. Okay. So the summer before in 2016, a girlfriend of mine was like, Oh, Jess, I heard this podcast of this family that took a trip around the world. This kind of sounds up your like way up your alley. You should listen to them. So we took like three date nights and listened to each podcast and talked about it and like, wow, this sounds incredible, but totally not where we're at at all. <laughs> incredible, but unrealistic. Unrealistic. Um, what was the podcast called? The Simple Show. So yeah. she actually wrote a memoir called At Home in the World, um, which is a great read, super fun. I think she does a great job. So I definitely recommend that mm -hmm. either like on audiobook or to read it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so we listened to it and we're like, that sounds wonderful. Let's do six weeks in Europe instead. <laughs> and then this all stuff happened. And then around that same time, her memoir was coming out and yeah, she, she, I got an early copy because you could apply to be in like their like interest Beta group, I guess. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So I was reading that like February, March. And then I found in my research, like an entire subculture of families to do this full time. Mm. And that just blew my mind. Like people do this all the time. You know, like I just heard of her and that was it. Um, so I just kind of went down a rabbit trail of like, it was like my full time job. <laughs> <laughs> And William, you were just getting worried and worried and worried. No, 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 no. Uh, one thing I've discovered about Jessica is she'll get on rabbit trails. And if I try to jump on and follow along and, uh, you know, see what's going on, uh, it's, it's, there's too many things, too many directions, too many rabbit trails. Uh, so I, I, let it, I let it go for a couple of months. If something's <laughs> still a rabbit trail a couple months later, then I can get involved and start to help shape he things. He checks my level of commitment to match my passion. Right. <laughs> I kind of do something similar. Good, good plan. Good plan. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of wisdom in not holding tight to things that very likely will go away. So, <laughs> so at this point in your life, did you own a home where you... Yes. You we owned own a home. home. Yeah. And we actually had um, a girlfriend, um, a friend of ours whose girlfriend was coming up and she needed a place to stay. So she was actually living in one of our rooms, watching our kid in exchange for living there. So we were oh, kind awesome. of, yeah, we kind of already had like an alternative. It wasn't Ish. like a commune, but it was like, a, you know, in it the was, Bay Area. It was like an au pair, just, but there was no payment. You nice. open, you're more open to just unusual circumstances, I think. So um, because it's just so expensive to live there. I, I'm so um, I'm, I'm curious, you know, so she's living there in exchange. She's just babysitting, cooking yeah. meals. What else does she do? No, she yeah. did that, but she did it so that I could regularly work more oh, okay. regularly and still retain the freedom to homeschool and do all the other that's things. Awesome. So she was kind of on call and we had date nights. Um, nice. So yeah, it was really helpful for us. That's a good exchange. Yeah, uh, yeah. She, yeah. She, she's married now. She's and, married now. And it was, it was, we're, we're happy but sad. <laughs> yeah. Long story short, it was our friend from church who, I don't even know if they were dating at the time. But yeah, they were. They were. I, I thought they were, but. I don't know. But I knew that, that there was at least some strong interest. She wanted to move up to the area, didn't have a job, didn't have a place to stay, um, needed a home base. And so uh, we met and, and um, they worked you know, out great. Yeah. She, yeah. She's good people. She's and, like, they're like part of the family now. They are, yeah. And, and so, in, in fact, uh, when they got married, she moved out so they could you know, establish their own home. And uh, fortunately for us, that was very expensive for them. And they're like, they asked, can we move back in? And, yeah, they actually and, went married so, for a As a married couple, house. they moved back in. For like a it, year. It was actually, it, it worked out really well. Yeah. It was, it was uh, not as awkward as fire you think. Fire school. Yeah, no, it wasn't as awkward as you think. Yeah. <laughs> no, that sounds really cool. I'm sure that was really good for them, you know, seeing, you know, taking care of kids yes. too and getting an understanding of what that's going to look like. They could save right. money. It, yeah. was, it worked so out So they well. actually moved out that January, February, around the same time we found out his mother's um, lung cancer had moved to the bones. Mm. At the same time that the um, 
the vacation time policy had changed at the same time that there was rumblings that they were moving offices because people were leaving and the new positions were being filled in that other office, which was Sacramento. So it's like two hours from the Bay Area. It's just cheaper, but you didn't really want to entertain that idea. Yeah. Yeah. So, and at that same time, they brought him in and they're like, so if you stay to October, we'll give you this lovely package. And he's like, yay, sweet. And I'm like, well, what happens after October? <laughs> like, he's like, nothing. I'm like, what? No. no they, <laughs> they, of course, weren't going to say. And, We're closing and, the office. And, and, and in hindsight, they would have kept me anyway. And they would have worked with me one way or the other. But when I put my two weeks in, they're like, oh. Man, we really wanted you to stay. <laughs> uh, so we, we had till October. Yeah. So it was like January, February. And I was like, okay, October, babe. We got to come up with this plan in Oct- by October. And right. So that was, we had a date. We're like, okay, we're leaving in October. Two, two weeks after you put in your two weeks and we're right. going to do it. And then around the same time is when I discovered the house sitting concept. Um, where you stay for free, you stay for free in their house while you exchange your services for watching their pets and home for free. Mm. And in Europe, most people go away for four weeks. They have holiday in a realistic time period. They know how to, they vacate. Know how to vacate. And so, <laughs> um, so yeah, so I, I started investigating that. And then we did a trial run to eat uh, England. No, we did the first trial run was in San Jose. Well, we, um, yeah. And that was how. The and, and, house, well, yeah, the house sitting. It, we tried locally. It's important to mention because if I'm not mistaken, you applied 20 or 30 or more. Oh, like so many more. Because we're a family. We're a family and we, we, whatever we were house sitting, we needed to be a family. So we yeah. couldn't just leave the kids behind. And so we did our first one in San Jose, very old dog, uh, young couple in, in a small apartment. Yeah. And we got a five-star review. And that was kind of what opened the door for other people to say, hey, it's a family of five, but. They got good reviews. They, mm. they got people vouching for them. And I think if we hadn't done that, right. it wouldn't have opened the door to do the test run in, in what was April. Uh, and in, she was a photographer too structure. over there. So I feel like we can, and it's a family, it's a family. So it just was perfect. Wow. So it was this idyllic like English hobby farm with sheep and two dogs and some outdoor cats. And they had a greenhouse and chickens where we had eggs yeah, every morning and, two roosters. and like heavy cream in your coffee. And the neighbor <laughs> boy price. that was the same age as our boys who said he needed to learn American so he could talk to his <laughs> new friends. <laughs> I mean, it was like the best deal ever. And we were sold. I was like, how many weeks months. were you there? We were there for 10 days. 10 days. Yeah. 10 days. Okay. 10 days. Nice. So- and, and during that time, we were actually confirmed for a house in Australia. But I, we, we as a couple had not agreed yeah. that we were actually doing this. So I was like, oh, well, at least we'll just go to Australia and then we can come back. Wow. So, so this, <laughs> this whole time I'm just working in the background and I'm just like, OK, like something's just got to give. And if it's happening, it's going to happen. But it's not because for lack of trying, it's going to make it. And maybe I'm forcing it. Maybe this is a full errand, but I'm going to do it. Wow. So you spent 10 days in England, uh, house sitting. It went well for you. Your family had a good experience there. Now you're being offered something in Australia, but I'm sensing maybe you oh, didn't no. go. Did you go? It was the whole time. No, we I, did. Yeah, we did. No, I knew. I knew about it. But it was it was the, the fact that we were committing to something, which is important for me when you're committing to okay. know that you're going to do it. Mm-hmm. And so I, I cringe a little bit because we hadn't yet decided uh, to take the plunge. Mm-hmm. We were making commitments overseas for a future period that was still undetermined whether we would even be there. Mm. So you know, it was it was a cringe moment for me because uh, that's just that's not so how I like fun. to operate. I, yeah. I, I like having the ducks in a row before. Which I'm like, oh, yes. we confirm, so we can go now. I mean, that's like- <laughs> Start that trip around the world. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're gonna be in Australia but, in December. But we babe. still had things that. Um, well, oh, that, we, we, we didn't even like figure out like how much could our how much could our house rent yeah. for? I mean, like any of these of logistics, like do we have enough money? Like, yeah, at the start of the year when these conversations were starting, we had a number of things that were going to keep us in the states. You know, mm-hmm. at that time we had uh, our friends living in our house, and we didn't want to leave them high and dry. Mm. That's important to us. We didn't want to. Say hey, it's worked out great, but uh, so long. Right. right. They, they initiated it well before we we were going to leave, and so that was one huge thing off our plate. My mom was dying. Yeah. I did not want to be out of the country. Yeah. Um, I was in a position, both financially, well, job wise, and geographically, 
that I could actually make the drive on a regular basis and go down and help mm. and work remotely for those periods of time and see her again and and just do uh -huh. do some things that my my siblings uh, in, in Indiana and Massachusetts couldn't do. Mm -hmm. and my brother who you know works with his hands in in the you know north of Sacramento and and if he's not there physically doing his mechanic work, he's not getting paid. Mm. So he can't just up and leave and work remotely. And so he can't be there. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the youngest. I've had a particular connection with my mom. Um, and I, I desperately wanted to be around for that. And so long as, as she was going to be there, I wanted to be there. Mm -hmm. And I had a situation where uh, my family was very much okay with me going and doing this because when else is this going to happen? Right. Um, and so we were able to do that. And... Um, you know, it, I, I was undecided whether I would even consider going if mom was still around. She that ended was, up passing in July, in June. Uh, June. Yeah. And we went down in July for the service. Yeah. yeah. So there were just a number of things that were hurdles either had to be overcome or had to go away. Yeah. Um, one way or another. And uh, and then this whole time I'm like, sure okay, did. garage sales. Like I'm getting rid of stuff. We were and planning <laughs> and, and we were making decisions as though we were going to leave because yeah. we knew eventually we wanted to do that if it had to be postponed for a time because we had things that were just too important to leave, then we would have postponed it and made different arrangements. But um, as it turned out, the so things that were holding okay. us uh, were no longer holding us by the time it was time to go. Yeah. Mm, I see. So um, when you when you went to Australia, was that before or after July? Oh, no, no. It was. We left was, in October. Yeah. So his mom passed in June, July, and we, and we went down for the service. And then we were around for a little bit longer, got renters like. We showed the house kind of like how you said you have a showing. We had a showing and one of the people just submitted an application and it was a good fit. And so they um, rented our house out in August. So we moved in with my parents for a couple months. They were very generous <laughs> to not only like not disown us for this really strange. Uh, Taking their grandbabies away to foreign lands uh, with no guarantee that we were going to come back. I mean, we, that was of course to come back. But and then they, ho know. they housed us. Yeah. So we did kind of a hodgepodge. We did, a, we had a lot of savings and he had his packages and a couple of other things through work. And then we had some, some rental income and then um, some inheritance. So we just kind of hodgepodged it. So he actually took a year off of work, which oh, wow. mm -hmm. yeah, was unheard of. Um, and then also just stretching our dollar. Like we pretty much when we hit Europe, we just went from house it to house it. So we may not have seen all of the locations or countries we wanted to be in, but we could live for free. So like we were in Finland for a month and I think our overall expenses for that month was $800. Wow. wow. And that was just gas and food gas because and food. they had a house and yeah, they had car. a car that they let us Whoa. have. And in Ju uh, July, June, July in Finland, it's all about being outdoors. So we were just hiking and we Pull, didn't. Pulling yeah. ticks out. Yeah, yeah. We, we went to a summer <laughs> house and we're swimming. So it, there wasn't a whole lot of extra expenses. Wow, that's so awesome! And how it's a long... brilliant way to travel. We didn't share about the uh, kilt, the eighty animal farmhouse. No, that's Kevin. The, that probably... sounds really cool. What is the eighty <laughs> animal farmhouse? And all these animals sound really cool. I'm sure that was a great experience. You know, going to these houses, oh my you gosh, have to the raise chickens. In Australia, are bats? like two and a half feet tall. <laughs> the fruit bats in Australia are a yeah, crazy. They're massive, and they swarm <laughs> like no other. It's amazing. Ooh. So scary. we did a house sit in France in like Normandy area. Yeah, it was about 90 minutes drive from uh, Mont Saint Michel, Mont Saint -Michel. Uh, which is that island castle thing that is halfway, ha it's an island half the time because of the tide. The tide. Um, but it was a legitimate um, self sustaining farm. They, neither of them worked off, off the farm. Um, when we started the house sit, we had 79 animals. And uh, it took a couple of days of them walking us through and then us shadowing and then us doing it while they shadowed us and then us doing it. And then they know, finally leaving for vacation. And then, and then they finally. Go. <laughs> we and, trust you now. We can go. What yeah, kind of much, animals? Yeah. 79 animals. So we had we had uh, sheep, uh, outdoor mousers, uh, uh, just, just some cats that cats. lived outside. We had a couple of dogs and we had sheep um, and we had llamas. Llamas, turkeys. The, the llamas, actually, if you didn't know, llamas will protect sheep. They will protect. No, I thought animal. it was the the fowl. Oh, they was, keep the foxes away from the fowl. Well, they do that too. But, but oh, and the but sheep. It, but they, they hung out with the sheep predominantly, oh, and okay. that was their that was kind of their thing. Turkey, geese, turkey, geese. Um, 
chickens, ducks, ducks, chickens, roosters, Shetland uh, pony, donkey, donkey, and some four and like horses. some yeah, like four or five horses. Yeah. Wow! <laughs> and, so it took two hours of work in the morning and two hours of work at night. And that's if everything went well. Yeah. And then there was one night I went out to catch. Uh, every night you had to to, to, to uh, bring in all the turkeys, and and so um, <laughs> looking for the the nests that they would. They, that they would build elsewhere because they like to nest elsewhere. And so we actually rescued, what, uh, five, four, yeah, four, four or five Cause eggs? Because then they'd like to repopulate because they use it for meat. So they're trying to be self-sustaining so they don't, because they're retired, so to help, you know, stretch the dollar. And they actually sent us pictures of a little, the little uh, um Yeah, we still talk to them on WhatsApp. Like, it was, like, grueling work that you just, like, get to know. It was exhausting. Oh, and the house was built in 1639. Nine. Wow. And William had to make a fire anytime we wanted hot water or heat in the house. <laughs> wow. And they had a larder. So I had to like go outside the house to the larder to get our food to come in and cook. Yeah, wow. So it, it really like, was an off the grid yeah. house. Yeah. We were like little house on the prairie it for and one two night, weeks. One night <laughs> you were I came brave back. to take that on. <laughs> we were naive to take that well, on. Then we <laughs> followed it with, we, we followed it with a house sit with like three are outdoors and we just set food out so i mean there's it's all about balance right it's yeah. life's about balance but we lost a sheep though where there was one night i could not find the sheep and i walked all around all the acreage in the mud and muck and could not find the thing and i said well if i can't find it tomorrow we'll, we'll send them a message and just let them know so that they're prepared when they get back um and then the next day i went out and i found a baby that wasn't there the day before and the mom was hanging out nearby in the barn and turns out no one knew one of the sheep was still pregnant when they left Oh, and wow. we, we had the a baby born. Was born. Yeah. The 80th was born. It was pretty wild. We didn't count them until we were done. We're like, gosh, how many how many animals yeah. was that? We, we didn't bother counting the the, the totality until after yeah. we left. Yeah. <laughs> how, how long That's did you insane. do that for? It was like two weeks, it was, two and a half weeks. It was two and a half weeks, yeah. yeah. And what were your kids doing to help out? Um, yeah, they, well, they like, so the, the horses had like prepped stuff and you had to like put five different ingredients together and then Pretty go feed mash. the horse. So they did that. Uh, they we, helped with the hay. We had, to, hay. we had to prep hay and buckets beforehand. Yeah. So after, after the, they were done eating, we'd go and take the buckets and prep for the next meal. And then the next meal, we just pull them out and, and pass them out. So they would help us fill up the buckets and measure it all, uh, make the mash and the things that needed to be made. Um, they'd help me with firewood, which collect the eggs. Uh, they'd, they'd collect the eggs. Uh, they helped us with firewood, which did lead to lead to uh, an emergency room visit for one of our sons. <laughs> he refused to put his shoes on. Dropped a log onto his bare foot. Oh. So that was a problem, but uh, he was fine. But 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 they helped us uh, collect all the eggs and round up all the animals uh, at night and let them loose in the morning. Um, they were. They were active participants in the process. Man, what an experience. What an education. Yeah. I feel like that is tremendous. That is so right, cool. Right, yeah. It's like you pay people to go live on a farm. And right. Like, were, were you guys like purely thing. exhausted after that, yes. that two weeks? Yeah, we totally were. But we were in so much better shape. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, we, the... and, we, and we looked fondly on it. So even though yeah. it was so grueling and like right. we probably should have gotten paid went... for that. But it was just like <laughs> an awesome it as a family. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was. Did. So then, yeah, we, we went to Paris after that, which is why we needed the rest day <laughs> while we were in Paris. <laughs> yeah. How long were you guys like on the road traveling and what percentage of that was weeks. house sitting? Yeah. So we did, we did 53 a, weeks, 53 weeks wow. and that's a great question. How much of it was house sitting? Uh, the All of the first world countries. So we did Australia, Australia South, South Africa, South Africa, and, and then, then all, all of, of Europe. Europe. So we spent six months in Europe. We did. So uh, I'd say the preponderance of, uh, of the, the second half of the year was uh, half of our year traveling um, was house it to house it. We had a couple of small Airbnbs, one in France. Like we have like little others. breaks, like one or two. And then we also use um, a credit card that gets travel points. Mm. So we would just use those travel points towards hotels. If we needed it. To do, Smart. to bridge the gap. So we were still netting out zero with that as well. But the first six months we were gone, um, mostly It was hostels. almost like two different trips, essentially. It, it like our first, it was very fast. We moved around a lot. We did a lot of hostels. And um, Airbnbs, and then our second half was all just hanging out with locals, much more slower pace. Being in one place for a long time also saves you money. It's called slow travel. Mm -hmm. the, the less you have to pick up and move, the less your costs are going to be. And you get to live like a local. You get to yeah. see what life is like there, not just what life is like near the tourist events. So you, you started picking more long-term 
yeah. kind of sits inside. Yeah, became a Because you can get really burnt out. I mean, we hear of a lot yeah. of families who are moving every week mm-hmm. or even every two week or even shorter than that. And you just, it's, you can't, you cannot sustain that. Especially with kids. That's, that's yes. exhausting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you start to have behavioral issues or people are just exhausted and, you know, you want them to have fun and to continue to enjoy it. So right. when we slowed down, it, it did become almost like two separate trips for that year. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, when we first left, our first three months were pretty well uh, organized, planned. Much of it was purchased, uh, if not all of it was purchased as far as the, like, the travel and airfare. The, the second three months was uh, largely planned, but not all purchased. Um, and we were, at, yeah, we had some flexibility there. And in the last six months, we just knew we would be in Europe. And so we had a lot of flexibility. We had to work around the, the, uh, the EU agreements the and, and the Schengen visa uh, yeah. arrangements. But other, other than that, we had options of places we could go if we were going to overstay something. We could look at the calendar and count days, uh, which ended up, uh, you know, almost being a problem <laughs> when we had a change in plans at one, one set. Um, but uh, by and large, the Europe half of the year, we intentionally left pretty fluid. And we were able to plan that out based on what became available in the long term. And by that time, we had quite a few reviews on our profile. So the applying and all of that was short and drastically. We already had a great presence on the platform. And so we had a really good rate of return as far as our applications. What platform is this? I've never heard of house sitting. I'll share with you because I have a little discount code. Nice. Go for it. Because it's our livelihood. If you join, you get a discount. Nice. And then we get two months free. And cool. so that's how we do it. All right. <laughs> well, I'm all ears. Yeah, we definitely put a link to it. So the, yeah, we'll the, the, link. The, the website is called Trusted House Sitters. Okay. Uh, one long word, trustedhousesitters.com. And they it's geared towards pet owners who have to travel or want to travel mm. and for whatever reason can't bring their beloved animals. And so the idea is it's a sharing economy um, where there's no cash that changes hands. We don't get paid to watch the animals nor do we pay to be in the house while we're watching your animals. With when you go international, you have visa issues if you're working in other countries. So. Oh, and since since at that point I wasn't working, that made uh, made it so that we could be tourists legitimately, and mm. you know, it wasn't any gray area on that on that topic. Although now there is such a thing yeah. as the digital nomad, which they also often will use house sitting as a way to because you're working but remotely. Hmm. Mm. Which is, so that's kind of halfway through. We're like, we're going to sell the house. Like we've changed so much. We do not need 2000 plus square footage with a huge backyard that requires a lot of maintenance. So there was a huge housing bubble in the Bay Area that summer and we sold and we were shocked that someone would pay that amount, but super happy. Nice. (laughs) And then we moved all the capital into investments and then essentially were nomads. We didn't have a permanent address. And then during that time, then we, then he started. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Homeless and jealous. Um, then he, during that time, was like, okay, I, I have to work. <laughs> this is not sustainable. Because we just thought we were going to go back to, and pick up our regular lives, which was our so plan, naive of us. Our but... loose plan was to go back and find another QB job, yeah. a cubicle job, and resume much of what we'd done before. And mm-hmm. we'd actually set that expectation with the kids. So yep. the, the biggest difficulty, I mean, the selling of the house was actually pretty easy. Our, our real we did it in fantastic. Sweden. We had to like go and sign off. And, and what month yeah. is this into your 53-week trip? Oh gosh! It uh, was June, July. So it was about three, three quarters of the way yeah. through. Yeah. And you, do but, you guys never even went stateside. You just sold it. Right. Yeah. So virtually. we had stored everything in the garage and in the attic above the garage. And uh, our realtor. It was on it for a week. I think it was on for a week. Right, but but he he was fantastic. He yeah. he came and negotiated with our tenants, and and they they allowed him to come in and through FaceTime and photos. He went through our stuff and was able to pare down what we just didn't want to keep, things that we absolutely wanted to keep, and he he did that virtually and put it in a storage unit for us. Then put it in storage. For <laughs> That's a great realtor. And he he earned his cushion. He, he sure did. And but it was only on it was on the market for a, a week. A week. Yeah. I think they did like one week in a public. Yeah, it was just a crazy bubble. Yeah, so. we, we got our asking price and we they they tried to negotiate and we said no, we kind of want that and they came back and said okay. <laughs> And nice. so that, that was it. So the, it wasn't a difficult process. It wasn't long. No. Uh, the, the most difficult thing for us was going through pictures and videos and saying, this is what we want to keep and this is what we don't. And then having to go, what's it called? Uh, the, the, the consulate of the embassy in Sweden and signing papers. And, yeah. and that was legitimately the biggest, the biggest part of it. Hmm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. 
Amazing. So then halfway through, then he's like, okay, well, I'm, I have to find a job. So then we yeah. started, he started looking for opportunities within an accounting, finance, bookkeeping that he can do. Hi, I'm out of country. Give me a bank account and I'll be allowed to help you. It went about as, as good as you could expect. Yeah, he did much. Once we finally got home back in the following October, then it was a lot better. And he was able to land a job. I so. had two very close bites yeah. where I was one of the last two or three people in the running. And both of them within you know, the very end of the trip said, we need someone now. We can't yeah. wait for you to get back. You're like, wow. you're not going to hire me from Edinburgh? Can you? Yeah. We can. I can start remote. I, we, I even offered to come back early. And they said, we need someone now. We can't wait even mm. two weeks. Oh, wow. So hindsight, we should have just enjoyed the last leg and not worry about the landing. But of course, you do worry. You have to worry, you have to worry about the landing. So especially, especially since we were doing such a biggest change of lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, to come back to no home, yeah. to leave with a home and come back yeah. with no home yeah. and no job. And no job. And no job. That's And that's, few prospects. Um, with three children. Hi, parents. We're totally responsible, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's 2019 now, but you sold your house at the beginning of 2018? No, uh, no it was just summer a couple, it was a few of months before 2018. We got back. Yeah. Summer of 2018. Yeah. Okay. So and we've been back since October 18. So it's almost. Yeah. It's Is it been a, almost a year? This uh, on the twenty fourth of this month, we will have been back one year. Yeah, and exactly. you have not had a permanent address since. Since we had a six month address, we did. Okay. We house sat for six months, which was house sat for six months. Yes, yeah. they went well, on a sabbatical to Germany. So wow. it was kind of a weird thing because we, we for that one we used uh, sabbatical homes, and that's geared towards the intellectuals, professors, and folks who are are taking either a, a vacation type sabbatical because their mind just needs to rest or they're going and doing a fellowship somewhere, which was the case for, yeah. for our homeowners. And they went to Germany and they had two cats and potentially a dog that their daughter may or may not have been able to hold on to. So we knew we were going to have two or three animals. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they put a discount into what the rent would have been. Mm. And um, so we covered some of the, like the expenses just to kind of help them out. And since we were there for so long, we're like, yeah, well, yeah, we're yeah, using huh? it. And, so. we, and we took care of the animals and, yeah. you know, took them to the vet and, you know, did all the things that we would normally do on a house sit. But it was a different arrangement, but it worked out really well. Wow. And, so and that was, was here was, in the United States. Yeah, was, Phoenix. Yeah. So the, the position that he took um, at right when we got back at the end of uh, 2018, is remote, but they wanted you to kind of be in a location mm -hmm. uh, just in the beginning for onboarding and stuff. So we've been here through, clients, yeah, yeah, through that. Prospecting. Yeah, just to kind of get situated with the, you know, being able to go back out. So we did some travel this summer to Montana in South Carolina. We were gone for about a month. In Georgia. And then we'll go again in December to Colorado and do a long house sit. And then I think we'll go back out international February. Nice. Yeah. Wow. So you can re uh, retain this current job, William, while you're doing international travel as well? Yeah. Yep. He'll have funkier hours. So it's, I mean, when we're in Europe, I think it's like 2 to 11 p.m. Um, or at least to kind of be available, but he can get his work done kind of whenever. So it's like as long as you get your work done within the time frame. Wow. Yeah. Well, that was very, very smart thinking of you to think, you know, how can I retain this lifestyle with my current skill set? You know, what are my options out there? And to think of working remotely and to to look for that very, very clever plan there. Um, yeah. Hindsight, it would have been great to have that beforehand. But we also didn't really know if we would enjoy it. Mm. If we, you know, we, you know, how some people were, it was going to be. Yeah. Right. Some people after six months are like, oh, I have another six months left. And, you know, we just didn't know because a lot of the stuff that I was reading, it was some people totally love it and keep going and some get back and just resume life as if it didn't happen. So mm -hmm. we weren't sure which camp we were going to fall into. It was and, an unknown. And was the bulk of the expenses, like, because uh, you're traveling as five tickets, you know, five yes, tickets per yeah. flight. Was that majority of it? I mean, there's always yeah. everyday housing costs of food and things like that. No, but yeah, flights were, were the biggest ticket. Okay. And so the nice thing is, is, if you keep it short, right? Our biggest hurdle, I think, was from San Francisco to China. That was our biggest, longest one. And then when we went from Sri Lanka to South Africa, and then South Africa up to Morocco. So our whole year, we only had three long, really, truly long. Yeah. Ones. And the so, other ones were shorter. So let's talk about your kids in this scenario. Mm. How, um, how did they take to this adjustment? How has it been traveling with them around the world? What kind of considerations um, did you find you needed to 
worry about or think about now that you're traveling with young ones? Uh, I'm curious to hear about that front. Yeah. Yeah. Um, insurance. insurance, health insurance, making sure we had that was huge. Obviously, a lot of places outside of the US, it's not as expensive, but just having more of that catastrophic stuff covered. Um, so you would have insurance in the countries you were visiting? You didn't have a uh, home U.S. health insurance? But no, well, he wasn't working, so we didn't have insurance through... We didn't have your, your typical... Company. No, but there are insurance US companies case. that will work with you if you're out of the country. You have to be out of the country because it's too expensive here. Um, so we used a program, uh, oh, no, World Nomad was the company, and a lot of people use that. I think Alliance is another one. How much are you paying for that? Um, I think it was two hundred dollars a month. It was in that ballpark, but Somewhere I don't know around that, that for a family of five. Okay. Um, and that was and for was, major, major things, yeah. or was it for covering like it? Your it covered life? everything, but it was really for catastrophic. But we had a, f a few incidences that we would file a in. claim, and then they would reimburse us. So okay. yeah, yeah. Because again, anywhere outside the U.S., it's. Health Let's just say our system more. is not as efficient as it should be. Yeah. And because it's, because of the inefficiencies uh, that are built into it in a number of levels, uh, you've got bureaucratic levels that add cost at every level. Um, a lot of that uh, is is just not present in other, in other countries. countries. And so they are able to, to offer um, decent and good health care. Some of it's is stellar. Like I had to. Without the, the, the okay. levels of bureaucracy driving the, the, the right, price. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. And I, I went to the UK for something and it was free. Theo went to Ireland. He had something in Ireland and it was like a hundred. Wow. For, so reasonable. Yeah. He had like a, it's a, a croup Cru symptoms. And so they just gave him like the nebulizer and things. So it was a hundred at the ER. Yeah, I'll be wow. the nebulizer. And, and then another thing for his toe. That was in France. In France. And I think that was like $75. No, it was more than that. But, but it, was, it wasn't. Yeah, what would have it was under $150, but wow. then you just would turn in the claim and then they'd reimburse you. So did you have to switch insurances every time you went to a new country or? No, it, it was just a cover. It was, it was a coverage with the company world wow. nomad worldwide. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. So you just let them know what countries you're going to. Okay. All so right. in terms of like educating your kids, you know, you said you were homeschooled prior to this. Mm -hmm. So that was all kind of set up. Did that homeschooling change as you're traveling? Yes. Do you just yes. use the traveling as education? Yes, we a, 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 port, a large portion of our year was just traveling uh, as education. We also got Kindles, and so our oldest read, read. a ton. And, read. and then mm -hmm. I would read aloud, you know, different books that kind of pertain to our location. And then they still had math, and they still had writing. Like, they had a travel journal that they kept. Oh, and phonics. So my younger two had phonics. No, my middle had phonics, and everyone had math. Nice. And, and you're doing a paper grade. curriculum or how are you oh, doing this? Yes. Yeah. So the math was paper and the phonics was paper. But as we went through it, I just tossed what we didn't, what we weren't using. Rip out the pages as, as we go. Because we used back, we were just backpacking. So we didn't have a whole, lot, a whole lot of stuff. Some of the books we actually did the iPad. Yeah, take, take pictures. Picture, turn the page, picture, turn the page. And just delete the photos as yeah. we read through it. And right. that was that was convenient in some ways, but uh, <laughs> you know, having a PDF copy that was clean would have been much nicer. Mm. Um, but we, we may do, and then yeah. we, we ended up throwing away a lot of stuff after we used it because why well, carry it around? We're not going to use it again. Right. Space was a premium, so yeah. we did try to we tried to kind of enable that one for that sure. That was very creative there. Now yeah. you were homeschooling before you started traveling, yeah. correct? Yeah. Um, what? What inspired the idea for you to homeschool from the get-go, especially you being a teacher? A teacher. A teacher, yeah. Yeah. Um, so my best friend growing up was homeschooled, and I just love their family and their family culture and dynamics and the way that all of their kids turned out, and I saw great value in that. And then just throughout our community, we have a lot of people who homeschool. So it wasn't... I've it, got two siblings who yeah. do it. Hmm. Uh, one of whom was actually teaching at the high school that we graduated from and in, and, and it was important enough for them to homeschool mm -hmm. um, i went through public school and that was reason enough for me to want to <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah and the um, freedom i mean i just like having. Wow. i mean we had home birth so we're kind of alternative anyway so it just kind of lends itself to having if more fit. personal freedoms yeah right. home birth right for all three kids lifestyle uh we, we the tried first for all three. the first was there was some problems so we okay. ended up having to go to the hospital oh, it was wow. an attempted 
<laughs> That's fantastic, though. So it wasn't a completely new and foreign concept that you conjured yeah. up. You had seen examples of it working well in your community, both with friends, family, yeah. people you knew. So you had enough confidence to say, hey, we're going to do this and make it happen. Yeah. Yeah, we had confidence. We had context and resources. And you were a teacher. So, I mean, yeah. it wasn't a great leap from that. Right, right. Yeah, that definitely helps, too. Um Go ahead. Well, I was just going to ask, you know, you're talking about traveling with three kids and only with backpacks. And we backpacked Europe for three, just three weeks. You know, we just had the one kid, but, you know, we didn't (laughs) check any baggage or anything. And, you know, we kind of had to do things a little differently. Like we only had one pair of pants. We had had a lot of wool stuff that dried quick and didn't smell so quick. Like any (laughs) tips you can offer or like, what does it look like? No wool. Yeah. So we, um, (laughs) when we were traveling or planning out the travel, we kind of followed the sun. So we really could we could kind of get away with lighter, less layers. Okay. Um, and and then, the kids were carrying stuff too. Yeah, they all had their own backpack. Nice. I don't think I still have those photos, but they got a little heavy. I mean, we were we tried really hard to kind of walk them through, like not keeping all the stuff that they have and trying. I mean, we had very, yeah, we periodically kind of tried. Did to, they have toys? They had some, but not a lot. And they had to carry I mean, all their clothes and all their toys, yeah. or you guys kind of supplemented and carried some of their stuff. It was too. both hands. Okay. I mean, we carried some of the school books, but they carried a lot. Wow. Yeah. I mean, since then, we've kind of embraced more of the carry on after. I mean, because it was hard. It was, and it, I don't think it was sustainable. Again, okay. it was just for that year, just trying it out. But now, like, we did a month. When we did our month, we did two check bags. Okay. And then they had, they each had a backpack for some more stuff. Wait, so, so we realized. Yeah, so for ahead. all 53 weeks, you didn't have any check bags? No, we, His, we, we was checked. checked. It. His yeah. backpack okay. was huge. Okay. Yeah, so okay. I, I had a big frameless backpack. It had three sections to it. Yeah. One section was dedicated mostly to the, the like things. meds. It was going to be, you know, medications, family items. Uh, I had some backup food, backup water, water, pure. I, I had four different types of water purification. <laughs> Because Which we didn't, I didn't use any of that, did thank we? Thank God we didn't have to. <laughs> but I wasn't going to go in and be like, well, we needed some medication, but we'll leave it at home because it's bulky. You know? yeah. uh, we don't know if we're going to have water. So you know, I, I brought a filter. It's better to bring filter. it and not need it than not have it. We had a live straw, a Berkey filter. We had, uh, uh, what's it called? The, uh, the tablets that, that, that iodine clean tablets. the water. Yeah. And then the, other, the, the second set that takes some of the iodine taste out of it. Mm. Uh, so we had three different ways of doing it not counting um, just boiling because yeah. we were kind of all over the place as far as countries and what right. we needed mm-hmm. so once we hit europe though we kind of slept off a lot of like we even had a net we actually set some home. for mosquitoes i mean just kind of you know some other things so yeah in europe i guess there's a given for you know clean drinking water you, and so and forth. you can get yeah you can get what you need pretty much but right. we, up until that we weren't quite sure right because you traveled all, all around. We hit world, 20 countries. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I, don't see I was going to show a picture of the boys wearing their backpacks, but they were uh, big. They were, yeah, like REI. They were, they were good size 40, REI. 30 liter. 30 liter, but they were they, they were kid size or they're scaled they're down. Kid, yeah, they're but, but they were the kind that you could adjust the height of where the, the, the belts went. Wow. Um, you know, you, internal you could, you, frame or something. Right? It was internal frame, and yeah. you, could, you could take off the top section. So anything that we were going to bring onto the plane as a carry on. Um, or we wanted them to have easy access to it was in the one pouch and they could pull the pouch off instead of having to like lift the whole bag out and go through it. Yeah. It was wow. a purpose built, you know, backpacking kids backpack. Um, and the, the, the two boys each had um, one of those. And so they carried most of their own stuff, not counting school supplies. Yeah. Um, and our daughter had a backpack that fell apart halfway through. We yeah, it was a Walmart a Paw Patrol backpack. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we knew it wasn't going to last. So but, we picked up one in England, and but we, she still has that one. She had the smallest stuff, so anything that was going to overflow, we just carried. It wasn't yeah. going to be the end of the world. But yeah, you're right. We, I mean, we had, you know, two pairs of shorts, three shirts, two yeah. pairs of pants. Almost a week's worth of shows. And the kids, I mean, in a year, you guys know you need new stuff by the end mm-hmm. or by the mm-hmm. new season. So we oh, would wow. pick up some stuff along the way for the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, but for us, we just pretty much had what we had. Yep. Wow. wow. That's wild. How did I your had... kids take to carrying all that? Was there a lot of complaining, <laughs> back aches? Uh... On occasion, there was. There actually. was, a, yeah. So we kind of helped to try to pull it out and like glean it because they would like grab, you know, people would give them stuff along the way mm. that they would yeah. hold on to. <laughs> and 
you know, that's nice, but now I have to carry this for 40 more weeks. So like we just tried to, or we, and then I think we mailed a couple stuff home because sure, yeah. there was stuff that they did really want, but it just was not Bulky. useful to the trip. So. And you mailed it back to your parents? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Their, their address has been, been our, our permanent, address. permanent address from uh, before we left. That's helpful to have because, yeah. someone who's willing to. Yeah. Uh, yes. They're very gracious. Very gracious. Yeah. And, and you know, if, if we got a piece of mail that we needed to address, they'd scan it in yeah. and send us a PDF. Wow, that's fantastic. I love how your family's supporting you on this journey because I think there would be many moments in your life where you do, on occasion, need to have that home base. Home home base, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Hmm. well, and and we had my pickup truck that we didn't want to pay to store and I didn't quite want to sell it at the time. And we we wanted the vehicle when we got back, assuming we were going to resume life. So I I thought, okay, well, let's, let's put some money into it, just some solid maintenance items and we'll loan it to my sister so her, her daughter can have a first car and you know it'd be great and lo and behold we're in our first country we're in china and i'm talking to my sister and and on the way back from a, a, a brief trip halfway up the state it wasn't the transmission it was that the drivetrain fell out while going down the grapevine uh, yeah. in california and it was a couple thousand for them to fix it and we're like we, we, we don't have the cash flow to like send you money i, I am so sorry this happened it never happened to me and you know, um, you know, before we, we were done with the trip, we ended up, um, you know, helping them pay um, for the, the repairs because it was our vehicle. And then we're like, you know what? Why don't, would you Why like don't to you keep, just it? keep it? You know, yeah, we yeah, we yeah, can't yeah. pay the rest. And we, 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 the way things are going, we're probably not going to so need it. Sometimes that back. doesn't always work out. Right. So I, we lost money on the deal. Um, you know, but and they lost money on the deal, but they ended up with a vehicle. So <laughs> they wanted to turn around and sell it right then and there. They, they would have made some money. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it was one of those things where we had an unknown. We, we hoped it would, would have worked out fine. And uh, uh, it just worked out the way that it did. And, and unfortunately, they had to deal with the drama of the, the car breaking down and getting towed, you know, 60 miles or something. So I do want to dig back in a little bit into the kids experience of it all. Was it kind of like a once in a lifetime education for them? Or was it kind of like just dragging them along to all these countries no though. they loved it i well first off we do not have like shy timid children they're very much they have not met a stranger they take things very much at face value so it's like oh well, we're in china today okay yeah we're in china here's a few and, words I when mean, you say hello yeah they totally took to it like fish to water and if you don't want them touching your blonde hair then just tell us and we'll make sure they don't touch your hair <laughs> It happened. And I feel like there was always kids like, you know, they they didn't necessarily speak the same language, but like play is a universal language. And so they had a great time. I mean, they still talk. And then a lot of times they love the pets, too. So they'll talk about locations based on the pets Pets. that we took care of. So so it's not Ireland. It's Oscar and Izzy's house. And, (laughs) you know, it's. It's not uh, Northern England. It was Oscar and Jemima's house, which were the kids that left. And they're like, do they really have to leave? Like, uh-huh. yeah, that's the point. Like, they're going, you know, they're going so that we can watch their yeah, cats. And, uh-huh. and, and interestingly enough, thinking about it, it, it's not shocking to me, but we didn't consider this before we left. Having children in all of these various contexts really broke down walls mm. because having two, two adults walking around kind of trying to figure things out is one thing. Having two adults doing that with a kid crying or right. with kids, you know, looking like they're hungry or whatever it happens to be, really opens people's hearts and mm. and opens up opportunities for for conversations that never would have happened before. Mm-hmm. And I think people were particularly gracious to us because we had children, and mm. you know, and, and even if they weren't looking miserable, because they weren't most of the time, mm-hmm. um, it still broke down certain cultural barriers that, you know, hey, you got kids, I got kids. I feel your pain. Right, <laughs> um, right, right. Really, it, it, I think it, it was not only amazing to be able to do this for our kids, something that we didn't have when we were growing up, something I never imagined we could do, but it also opened up possibilities while we were there um, simply because children were present. Yeah. I, I, we never found a country that didn't love children. So it was, you know, a really great experience. I can think of when we were at a park and there was like some kids slacklining, some like young adults slacklining and you they know like slacklining. Yeah. 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 Tie yeah. up like a, 
tie rope between two uh-huh. trees, right? And you yeah, and it. they're like, hey, do you want to try to our kids? Or our kids were going over asking what they were doing, and like, if it was just us, we would have kept walking, like, like not interact with the local. Like, oh, that's it. cool, whatever. But we totally had this like amazing local exchange with this, you know, and they climbing. <laughs> so nice, yeah, it's great. And they, of course, they're kids, so you have hard times, but. I feel like you you have to parent all the time anyway, mm-hmm. so why not do it while you're traveling the world? I mean, they, yeah. they were kids. I love that. You have to parent yeah. anyway. Why not do yeah. it while traveling the world? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it was helpful, though, to start reintroducing certain routines mm-hmm. because we're, we're creatures of habit. You know, if we, if we don't have certain familiar things, even just the simple idea of going to bed is is totally disruptive yeah and so once we started to to slow down and we had more time to to do things that we always did um we we found that the um the fact that we were fatiguing of travel we were able to continue on and um just uh it became a lifestyle as opposed to just a mini vacation yeah so we started more living more you know Mm -hmm. than as opposed to running and not filling each week. Like we don't see it all. We see, you know, one thing and then we rest for a day and then we'll do like an afternoon. So it's very much like living life. You're just doing it in another country. Interesting. Yeah, yeah that's we were- good advice there. Cause I, I was wondering that as well, you know, like you said, kids do thrive off routine. And if you get too much out of routine, then you hit behavioral things and exhaustion yeah. and, and for sure. Well. All of those yeah. So it wasn't it wasn't a vacation. It's definitely like slow travel is living life just in another yeah. country. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we were in uh, outside of Helsinki in Finland, and we never went into Helsinki. Mm-hmm. Um, we kept talking, hey, we should probably do something. Yeah, we should probably do something. I think we really need a, 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 a veg day because we're just we, we need it right now. And so mm. it was the same country that we were invited to go to a, a summer cottage. Uh, from some locals who were friends of friends who are now our friends. Um, they had a couple of kids. We we went up for a hike and we totally hit it off. And they invited us in. And so we had legitimate local Finish experience. culture. It we was amazing. In their home, we shopped in their, their grocery. We drove their car. Uh, you know, we were invited to an island for, for I forget how long we were there, but uh, for, for, for several nights. Um, so we did a lot of local things. We just didn't do the touristy things right. at all. In right. fact, we saw fighter jets in the air, and I was like, what's going on? And then after, <laughs> we were driving around the ring road to get around Helsinki, and come to find out, our president was in town, oh, yeah. and we didn't know it. We weren't <laughs> looking at this we, we didn't want to get sucked into stuff, and we needed to veg. And after the fact, we discovered, hey, our president was in town, and, yeah. you know, okay. Or, like, we were in, uh, we spent a week in Paris, and we never made it into the Louvre. And there was like one other thing we didn't oh, make it into. We, we the totally, totally didn't right. get to do that. But, so because, you know, we would go out all day and then like the next day we would rest. And, you know, nobody wanted to wake up super early and get in line to lose. No. So we'll just do that next time. Mm. So, you know, we we didn't see it all, but we saw a lot. And we also yeah. lived there as well. So, you know, we would go down to the cafe and, and you know, still- it didn't become like a checklist or a bucket list. Yeah. It was just you were living and experiencing you're still leaving your kids some adventure to have when they're grown up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or for next year. <laughs> or for next year. So uh, I'm, cu- I'm curious because we talked a lot about your world travel, but you're still kind of in this mode of travel, like no permanent address. And I'm a little curious to dig into a little bit of the finances here because, you know, housing costs is so much of a big expense, you know, in our lives. And, you know, everyone's like... I feel like most people, half their paycheck goes to paying off housing. And for you guys, you've been sort of able to eliminate most of that by doing this house sitting thing. And um, so are you guys able to have like a pretty, even just on one income, able to save a lot still? Or is it kind of just uh, maintaining this lifestyle? Uh, That's a great question. So yes, ideally we could save on like a full-time salary. He's still kind of in like more of a contractor situation. So he's looking to add more hours. So yes, like if he was full-time or closer to full-time, we would be able to have this situation and save. Yeah. If we didn't have money and investments, we wouldn't be doing this right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just, uh, it, it, we would have had to have done what most people do and that's just building their business up slowly they're working their full-time job they're building a business and then when it's finally viable then break off from the traditional roles and then move into more of an entrepreneurial thing 
we didn't have a job. And so we tried starting this um, lifestyle and it's, it's not paying for itself yet. No, no, um, we're not there yet. But so, when we are, then yes, we, it will pay for itself and we will have money to set aside for savings. Yeah. Ideally. Yeah. So the answer is yes, but we're just not quite there yet. <laughs> You're getting there. So are you drawing from investments to kind of float yes. the lifestyle for now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. But you figure too, you know, it's, it's, a an exchange of value, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, you could be saving a ton of money and doing nothing with your life. Or yeah. you could be living yeah. and spending what you are making, but you're experiencing so much, you know? So it, it comes down to that too. It's like, where, where do you want your money to go? Is just to sit in the bank and make you feel comfortable knowing it's there or to allow you this amazing lifestyle option? And if we had a, if we'd gone back and had a cubicle job, there's no way we would have been in South Carolina. We wouldn't have been able to take a right. canoe trip 47 miles, right. um, you know, on a, on, on a week in, in between travel yeah um there's there's still things that we're doing that simply would not be possible or at least very unlikely if we were trying to go back and do a traditional lifestyle how, how was this canoe trip 47 miles on a canoe with three of your kids how was yeah. that awesome it was so epic we uh awesome. we took a part of like the lewis and clark trail like the expedition and so we camped out with some of their campsites it was a um a company that is in montana so i did some like media stuff in exchange for like a reduced rate for it's not sponsored but kind of um and so we had an agreement so that i could trade this kind of trade yeah. and they they provided the canoes they provided the, the food, food they provided the tents um wow, we, we paid them the money and and did some exchange and brought some sleeping bags and our own stuff mm -hmm. and um everything else was otherwise was provided epic. for it we was awesome we didn't have to cook or make coffee in the morning <laughs> you know. it was awesome. so, so they would then, meet you at various points and drop off um no they no. canoed with us no it, no, it was we had a, we essentially had a, guided a, tour. a guided tour oh, cool the river for that sounds so cool wow well, so how, I, I how many days is that 47, 47 we did four days four three days nights. nights wow so we had three. and you're like totally in remote like if something happens I mean, I guess you, you, she has like a satellite thing, That's but fun. you have no service or wow. Wi-Fi. Yeah. So it was, um, they had three canoes. They had two guides. Um, one of our children was with one. Um, another one of our children was with the other. And then our we daughter was in, was in the canoe with us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so um, it, and all the gear was packed into the canoes. So all the water. All the water, all the food. Like everything in, everything All out. the firewood, all yeah, the tents. Awesome. Wow. And, and how many stuff. days was this? Four. four days and three nights. Wow. Amazing. That Just outside awesome of Great trip. Falls. Yes. Yeah. So tell us, yeah. what have been some of your favorite places you've been to? Oh, For different reasons? Yeah, different places. that's hard. I, we really love the places we really got to hunker down in. So I love France. No, what's not? I mean, I know. Other than you know, Scotland, tagging. We were, things, we were in Edinburgh France France. for six weeks on a house sit, and that was amazing. And are you guys usually cooking your own food while you're traveling? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Living like we locals. don't really go out very much. Um, yeah, we do more of the experience. Like we'll pay to go to a museum before we'll go out for dinner. I think. And you're usually doing more outdoorsy type stuff, like experiencing the different landscape. It depends. And nature yeah. Or yeah if it's too hot out we'll go inside something or if it's gonna be too rainy we'll go into a museum well and we kind of kind of differentiated like we did some city house sits and then some countryside so the city one you have more expensive walkable. yeah it's walkable but you probably have more like experiences that cost money or if you're in the countryside you may have to rent a car but that may be your only expense mm. the entire time because you're just out in the countryside yeah how Take do you down. how do you handle um certain common fears people have of traveling like one for sure is not being able to speak the language and being in a place that you are unfamiliar with secondly safety concerns comfort about where you're going to be staying how do you you know work through these things and figure out where you want to go in order to feel comfortable yeah. oh, with taking your research. kids there yeah there's so much out there i mean we didn't really pick any unsafe or like un trekked location i was unwilling at this time to go to south america for example mm -hmm. it's just uh it, there were certain places that we would love to go but there's just too much unrest mm -hmm. and i said you know i, I don't uh, that that would be nice at some other point but not right now but there's a family like a travel family right now that are there and 
Mm -hmm. I, but, yeah, but, different but I, thresholds, but I, said, I guess. No, and, and so that was, that was, just, uh, that was not something yeah. that I was willing to, to breach at the time. But then again, we also went to South Africa, and yeah. that had its own issues where literally, even if you left a bag of trash in your car, someone would break in, um, and, and you, know, you didn't stop at stoplights and stop signs, especially right. after dark. You literally would just slow down and roll through. Right. So yeah, there are different things, but most of it had to do with research. Yeah, I think just doing your due diligence. I mean, there's so many family blogs out there about where you've been, and we have a lot, we're in a lot of Facebook groups that you can ask families like this area, this neighborhood, this location. Um, we were entertaining the idea of India, and I asked, and they're like, yeah, don't do India unless you're going to be there for three weeks because you'll be sick yeah. for the first you know, week mm -hmm. and a half. And, and e like, no. even people that I know who are Indian and go back into the family, yeah. they would, they were, were on an American diet and they would go back and they'd get sick. Mm. So, we're like, so we did Sri Lanka instead in DLA. Yeah. Mm. Um, some of it has to do with research. Some of it has to do with, um, you, you suck it up and go. Yeah. Um, I, I'm very big on uh, keeping your head on a swivel, uh, always looking around, not letting people get too close. Right. Um, I'm not afraid to, to yell out to somebody back off because you never know. <laughs> and, and yes, that, that's the point. Uh, you know, and it's okay to be embarrassing for a moment. If that means that my kids are going to be safe. Yeah. We never um, had any issue though. We Nothing, fortunately never the did. only thing that we had stolen is when it was actually checked into the airport oh, really? in Johannesburg and they stole some wires, like um, some cords for charging. Mm -hmm. But that was literally the only time we got Not anything major. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, uh, you, you, you try to live within the legal aspect. Um, a lot of places you couldn't have a knife or carry a knife. So I'd you know, get a big, uh, something big in my pocket, um, put a sock in my, or put some coins in a sock and like, you know, that could be something if absolutely desperately needed. Right. Um, and you, you just in certain places, don't let the kids out of your side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We kept them close. And then with the house sitting, we, we are, we usually meet with them beforehand um, they'll to introduce us to their neighbors. So I feel like with the house sitting, you definitely get more of a local experience and you have a lot of safety. Like, and they got the insight. They have the insight. So like there's been a couple of times where we texted the homeowners, like if we did need to go to the hospital or get medical care, you know, we'd ask them their recommendations. Um, mm -hmm. Or we would join expat f Facebook groups of that, of that country. Mm -hmm. Um and then with Google Maps and you get like a, you know, a SIM card, you can really find anywhere and like, you know, food, is food, food down the road? Is it a safe, you know, a supermarket down the road? We have technology available to us that wasn't available yeah. many generations, well, any generations ago, really. Um, most places that we went, we were able to download Google Maps, not the street view, of course, and not the, the store details, but you could download the maps completely offline and you didn't have to have a SIM card if you couldn't get one. And you could still navigate from place to place. And then Google Translate was good enough. Google Translate. It Most was awkward, people knew. But it I mean, I guess in China, there there definitely was a language thing. But Too what we dialects. stayed in a hostel or like a hotel, and you can get the concierge to like translate. I mean, everything took like you know five or ten more steps than what you would in the states or an English speaking country. But the trade off was pretty awesome. We we discovered in our first country that. Whatever we were going to do, especially in places where you couldn't use your credit card or you might not be able to use a credit card for one reason or another, that you had to have a certain amount of cash on hand. Mm. I, I brought U.S. cash with not a ton, but uh, enough that – and knowing that U.S. cash is still the, the reserve currency of most countries worldwide, um, having that le led to some comfort. And I didn't keep it in one in one place. I, I broke it up. Uh, and that way, if we were robbed, it, it – we had the likelihood that we'd still have something enough to get to the next place. Right. Um, we also discovered that if we didn't have enough cash, you might be SOL. You might be stuck somewhere. And we were, was it Guilin? We had uh, gone in, into China, China, out in the countryside to see something, I think it was on the back of one of their, their bills. Yeah. And it was a picture of the countryside. And that's why we went. And our plan was uh, before leaving town, we'd stop off at the ATM, we'd get some more cash, we'd be able to pay the taxi, we'd get where we're going. But there was one place in town that had ATMs, and there were three ATMs. One of them was completely offline, the other two were out of money. And we were legitimately concerned, how are we going to leave this place? We cannot walk, it's too many miles. Uh, we can't pay a taxi right now. Um, and we were able 
to exchange some U.S. dollars, and we had just enough money that we paid at the hostel for um, like a the, the reservation fee, the deposit, and that gave us just enough to get uh, our bus to, to get our bus, and I think like a bag of chips. <laughs> but there was there wasn't much yeah. buffer, and it was at that point we realized, okay, we legitimately need to to plan for the next two steps and have enough cash to get through. That, which which ended up having a little bit of uh, of cash waste because at the end of a trip you may or may not be able to spend it before you leave. Right. But um, we have some souvenirs now, <laughs> um, and we learned a powerful lesson. You know, know what you can and can't do, and mm. and even though there's an ATM, it may not work. So you have to have enough reserve to get you to at least one or two steps beyond where you currently are. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that you know was a freaky night because we yeah. just weren't sure what like, was going to yeah, happen. Like, we'll be stranded here. Um, it, it worked out, praise the Lord. We, we didn't end up getting stuck where we, where we were, but we learned one thing that we needed to do that was going to you know, help us the rest of the trip. Do you feel like you're raising pretty resilient kids because of all this yeah. traveling and all this For problem sure. solving? But sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> kids are still kids. I know, kids are still kids. Maybe later on. Like, we're just sowing seeds and the harvest will just be, like, years away. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so you know we're going kind of long in this show, so just like yeah, wrap sorry. up, and you know I feel like some people might be really, really inspired by the story. You know I am. I love traveling. We both love traveling, and just like thinking about the future years where we want to do more traveling, and even just now, like what would you say? You mentioned some books, a podcast, any other resources that you really suggest? You mentioned some Facebook groups that sound pretty cool. Uh, anything you'd suggest yeah. for people who are more interested in really diving deep into this? Yeah, I would just, uh, tons of reading. I just asking, finding people who are doing it and then asking. I mean, you if you look for like world school families, even road school people who are RVing, um, we were pretty shocked to discover like the rest of the world is, is, lives on a lot less than Americans do. And then especially us in the Bay Area, like our monthly budget just changed drastically. We thought it totally impossible. But like you were saying, most of our funds were going towards a house and our stuff, like mm -hmm. keeping our keeping all that up. And so when you eliminated that, we were shocked to find how much reserve or you know how, how, we, how, how farther yeah we really did have. Hmm. Um, yeah. So it's it's pretty shocking. I mean even Phoenix right now are, you know, to get an Airbnb for a month is like nowhere near what a mortgage and you know all that stuff is in, in California. So we had a kind of a unifying theme as, as far as our travel. We had a list of places we wanted to go, things that were must do's, must see, um, and then the, the the second half was essentially um, we had options available, and because we were doing it with the uh, house sitting kind of as our backbone to, to stretch the dollar. Um, we, we were able to go in a lot of different places that um, opened up because, you know, Finland wasn't on the list per mm -hmm. se, but a month opened up and that was gold. It was yeah. amazing. It was, we got to do something we weren't planning on doing, um, but it opened up because we had this specific plan. Mm -hmm. We had uh, the, the the framework of, of the house sitting. Yeah. Um, if you just want to go, I, I, I suspect we probably would have gotten burnt out if we didn't have certain goals we wanted to hit and then a framework that we were working with in both in time and in, in structure. And being flexible, right, for, for other things to happen. Yeah. There was quite a few times we had to be redirected. So just being open and then, yeah, just doing your research, finding out what your numbers are because our numbers, we may be really comfortable at a certain rate and some may balk at that. You know, there's tire, fire and there's fat tire and, you know, just understanding like we couldn't do hostels or really cheap or squat in Mexico for months on then while we watch our savings go up. So I think also just understanding where you're at as a family. What, do, what are you guys driving right now, by the way? minivan we have a van okay we just and have one everything can fit in that van all your life positions. we're working on that we're not quite there yet uh, so we'll, when we yes. got back the answer is yes uh, <laughs> when we got back we had stored quite a bit of stuff under your folks house and uh we knew we were going to be in one spot for six months we pulled a bunch of stuff out and we got, got a little, little complacent we got a little lazy yeah uh got a little complacent had, not so nomad had what 30 stuffies per kid. I, know, stuffed animals. Just, I think it was just like a, it was just like, Oh my gosh, all this stuff I've been missing. Yeah. <laughs> well, the yeah. pendulum did swing. Yes. Um, so uh, before long, I think we, we will have, have uh, really yes. worked it back to a point where yes, everything, but the bicycles by December, fit. by December, we will Actually. be into all of our just one. stuff. Yeah. And now also Actually, too, we're, we're having more shape. of a formal, formal curriculum for school. 
So I do have a lot more books. So we're, we're working, trying to figure it out a little bit more. It's, it's morphing. Yeah. We kind of have a, a philosophy with homeschool. We're not dyed in the wool. This is, you know, to, till death do us part. We're going to do it as long as it works, mm-hmm. as long as it works for our children individually, as long as it works for our family and, and family plans and family goals. If something just flat out doesn't work, we're going to stop. Right. And we, we look at a lot of life with that lens. Um, we want to travel. We want to continue this. It is one of our, our highest goals that our kids get to see creation, get mm-hmm. to see the majesty of this earth, get to see um, humanity in many different ways. You know, the, the reality that we look so different, we sound so different, we smell so different. Um, and yet we all, you know, I don't want to say something quite, yeah. quite like that. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> we all have the same biological functions. We all have the same needs. We all need love. We all need community. Um, and, you know, ultimately we, we all have, uh, you know, we all come from the same same place, essentially. Yeah. And uh, we, we, I really wanted our kids to have a much better appreciation for the fact that, yeah, we're in a bubble. For the hard work that um, it requires. <laughs> but, it, but it takes hard work. It takes um, it takes all kinds. And um, coming back with that appreciation and uh, a respect for other cultures, a respect for people that you simply wouldn't get even in a diversified area that happens to be well off. Um, seeing people sweeping their, their front property with literally straws that are bound together because, or, or weeds rather, um, and, and a homemade broom and squatting to, to take care of your business. And that's China um, <laughs> and South Africa and yeah, a lot of places. Um, you know, I really hope that they have, uh, they don't come back from all of that with a chip on their shoulder. Mm. That's really important to me. I think that that is so profound. And if, if you can instill that, which I'm sure all of this journeying will show your kids firsthand how, how, uh, how different the world is and yet how, as you said, Come we're on. all the same. And yet, you know, the different standards of lifestyle in the different countries. I think that that is irreplaceable education that so many of us so. never even get to experience. So that is amazing that you're doing that and exposing your kids to this and what an incredibly enriched life you're building. Very inspiring. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. So, so if people want to reach out to you, you know, they love your story, <laughs> how would you um, recommend they do that? Um, we, yeah, we have an email address. Uh, we're on Instagram under Let's Adventure More. And then we do have a website that has um, needing some updating. And yeah, then we that. have a YouTube. Yeah, we, there's we, an email attached to the Instagram. That's the best way to get a hold of us. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> let's adventure more at gmail.com is, yeah. is something that'll get way. directly to us. We've been very busy this year just trying to build the lifestyle that a lot of our like sharing and social media has kind of halted because we're. I thought I posted twice this year. I know. I He's can't, I can't yeah. figure out why you didn't have time to update us. <laughs> <laughs> I know, because the year, I think the year is just going to stand alone. And we've learned that this year is that was a year of like epic proportions not to be replicated. And we still are trying to mesh what we want and the lifestyle that we want with what what something what we were before with something of that epic year and that kind of is like where we're at right now and it's it takes time what we're finding like not always happy about that but just it takes time sure (laughs) jessica william thank you so much for coming on to the show we loved your story i'm sure all our listeners did too thanks thanks so much absolutely have a good one